Hi guys, welcome to Full Time Devils. I'm Adam, he's Steve, they're Paul, I'm Barry, and we are here for another huge debate. And today, it's about the man himself. Ibrahim of it. You're not getting me in anything like that. Forget it. Baz got the shirt. Baz has got the shirt. Baz got the shirt. Is, is, is Latin's actual shirt? Actual shirt. Actual shirt. Anyway, Paul, Barry, thank you for joining us um, to provide Welcome. the common sure. sense to the debate because obviously we see Barry really on fan cams quite a bit. I mean, that is a long, 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 long drive where Barry managed to come from. <laughs> it? That is a. I mean, I don't know what the traffic's like, but that is a drive and a half. That isn't it. All yeah. the way from Johannesburg. I bet, it's, for yeah. I bet it's quicker than, than my, my trip on the M6 though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the M60 on a, a dinner time or tea time on a Friday, forget it. I'd rather have a flight to South Africa. I, I walk to the games, lads, from here. I don't drive, I walk. It's a good job you started walking when Moise was here because you missed all his game. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on from that. Today, we're here to talk about Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Of course, he scored the winner in the cup final against Southampton. He was the main man for Manchester United. He's been the main man for most of the season, but still his future is hanging in the balance. He hasn't signed a contract extension yet, although it's believed he was going to earlier in the season. And there's been some doubt and speculation recently that he wasn't going to sign. Now, we've got a few topics that we want to discuss. The first being, Personally, is it a beard or a mustache? Y y yeah, it's it's kind of both, isn't it? Mm. But firstly, it's like what Doug Tanya had. Do we personally think Zlatan Ibrahimovic is going to stay? Is he renewing? And I'm going to come to Paul first. Uh, if you'd asked me this, I guess a month ago, I think I would have said yes, definitely. And I still think that I would lean to he's going to stay. But it was just it was just interesting. So I was at the press conference after the game and Mourinho uh, was asked about whether Zlatan was saying, which obviously earlier, a few a few months earlier, he said in Zlatan's head, in the club's head, in Mourinho's head, it's it's all but signed. Um, but instead, he said, I've never begged a player to stay. Um, and uh, even when Zlatan said he was leaving to go to Barcelona, I, I didn't beg him to stay. But... If United fans want to go around his house to get him to stay, that's fine. It was just like, okay. I did it. Um, uh, did you? Yeah. He called the did police. He say he was gonna, did he say he was going to stay? Hey, no, he just called the police. I rubbed his milk. Black grass is <laughs> He's a red top guy. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, in the mix zone after that, um, he Zlatan was uh, equivocal about his future you know he talked about how much his kids had been an influence on his decision to come to United and one of the journalists asked him whether his kids want him to stay at United and I mean I think reading between the lines he was hinting that he would want to stay but I wonder whether how I wonder how much of it will depend on how he's feeling physically and what the expectations are on him is he expected to play every minute of every game next season and will that have a bearing on what his decision is what, what kind of feeling do you get, Barry? I think the short answer is I don't know. Um, I think <laughs> Cheers, that, moving uh, on. <laughs> <laughs> I think what, what he'll do, as Lutton always does, is he'll keep us guessing to the last minute. And um, I would imagine in his own mind, he probably knows exactly what he's going to be doing next season, but we'll be left to sweat it out. Yeah. Um, Maybe he'll be influenced as to whether we're in the Champions League or not. Maybe he'll be influenced by the fact that he's having such a sublime season that to go out on top, um, you know, it's very Cantona-esque. It reminds me of that situation a little bit. So maybe he'd want to go out at the top. But the guy's not short of confidence. And I think if he scores 30-plus or 35-plus this season, in his own mind, he'll probably think he can do better next season. But I think we'll only find this out come season end. I, I, he was I, go on, go sorry on, to sorry. interrupt, Adam. He, he was asked specifically about whether the Champions League was an issue, and he said not at all in in that mix zone. Now we don't know. People say things that they don't necessarily mean. But he but came he without said, you know, I, so it can't I, be that I, I much of a factor. That's exactly what he said. Especially footballers. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, but that's exactly what he said. He said I came to United without the Champions League, so that's not a factor in the decision. Uh, I think he would, he would obviously love to win it before he goes out. And I think if we did get Champions League football, it would probably make his decision a little bit easier, although it's probably not 
the, the determining factor in whether he stays. Something that Barry touched on and that is my personal belief as well. I'll come to you now, Steve. My personal belief is he knows he's staying. He wants us to beg him. And Jose is kind of like <laughs> hinted at that as well. And I think Zlatan loves it, didn't he? We've seen how he announced his, his... We said it when Hazard did it that time. Oh, we'd never let a player announce their club like that. And then Zlatan comes and he, yeah. <laughs> he does it. I was um, shocked and, actually when he, when he did say he was coming to United. I, I didn't think it was happening. Despite all this, the pieces were sort of falling into place with Mourinho and all the rest of it. And then... When he when he actually dropped it, I'd put him on alerts like a couple of days beforehand. So when he dropped it, I got it and I was like, because <laughs> he just put the badge, didn't he? My yeah, next yeah, club yeah. will be, I think, and just put the club badge. And I was like, wow, like what a complete change in this post Fergie era that we're in. Because that just wouldn't have happened like that, would it? And you, you you think that Manchester United would have wanted to control that break in as well, so we can generate a lot of hype around it and you know sell noodles and stuff. But like, I don't know. Is like Barry, I, I don't know. I do know that he's been offered to MLS. But I don't know what the timeline is on that, whether that's for the start of their following season, which is you know uh, this time next year, maybe. So maybe March he looks at... Starts, yeah, March so maybe April. he might be looking at maybe an eight-month contract with United rather than a 12-month contract. But this isn't strange for us to leave players in their mid-30s uh, coming into February and March without getting an extension. We've seen it with Giggs and Skulls for nearly a decade. You've seen it with a lot Falcon. of players. Uh, Vadasar, I think, as well. We've seen it in Van der Sar. We've seen it with a lot of players. Uh, Rio, I think, was one that just... Uh, Carrick as well is another example. We just see them getting these sort of rolling 12-month deals. I think with Zlatan... Wasn't that I a kind of policy, though, under Fergie to only give one-year contracts yeah, probably, to people yeah. that were over a certain age? So, I don't know what the crack is. It, him coming on a one-year deal this time, like Paul said earlier in the season, it seemed like it was a completely done thing. Uh, maybe when, with hindsight, we look back at it like, yeah, he was always going to stay for two years and he's just doing a bit of showmanship and keeping the interest there and maybe even putting feelers out. Uh, and like both of you have mentioned as well, the fact that he's scored as many goals as he scored this year and he's took to the league, once he get a bit of experience under his belt, he might be really good. I love how, yeah, um, I love, actually I'll talk about that in a bit, but I love how that Zlatan Ibrahimovic has been criticised a lot and I just feel it's something to do with that and kind of like everyone has criticised me. There were times when he was playing poorly in the season, he was getting a lot of headlines and I just feel like if he controls the narrative of now these guys want me to stay, everyone thinks I should stay in England, I have been a success, that means, and I think those kind of things will play in his head. Um, where, do, where do you guys think Zlatan Ibrahimovic ranks? Um, now, recently we, we, we sent out a video on, on Facebook and social media of United's goal scorers and, and how only 11 players in our history have scored over 30 or more goals in a season. Now, Zlatan is very close to becoming the 12th man to do that. But where do you guys think he ranks in our all-time great strikers? Obviously, it's hard. He's only been here for a season. But not, still, not he's had an yet. impact. Um, Barry, what, where do you think he does rank? Um, if he scores a hat trick in every game between now and the end of the season, he'll be <laughs> our greatest striker ever. <laughs> I'll roll it up. It, it's, it's impossible to rank him because he's been there for so short. Mm. Um, but as an impact player, um, he ranks up with the best of them. And like I say, I think in many respects, he's brought an air of Eric Cantona to United. I, I, I don't like comparing with previous players, but influence on the young players, keeps himself fit, not short on confidence, pretty arrogant. So the two of them are similar in that respect. I think Zlatan is a much better goal scorer than Eric was. Um, it's shades almost of Robin van Persie coming in and winning the league for us in Fergie's last season. So his goals have been pivotal. He's won us a lot of points. He's won us a lot of games. So I think come the end of the season, we'll be better placed to make that comment. But thus far, he's made one hell of an impression, that's for sure. And there are a lot of um, ex-players like Michael Owen, who I think must be eating their words at what they've said previously. He about has to Slatton. eat a lot of words, though, to be fair, Barry. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> he's just on I a guess. strict alphabet <laughs> spaghetti diet now. <laughs> I love how we get food in everyone. Yes, <laughs> I just nearly never said the word right. Now. Yeah, go on, man. But, Sorry. Um, I think I think Zlatan is made for Man United. He's that big personality. Um, he's made a massive impact with the fans. Um, he's the name on everybody's lips at the moment, worldwide. And you know, I just hope it continues. 
the fact that he's been able to remain injury free really bears testament mm. to the fact as wow. to how well he looks after himself because a guy that big you know he's a, a high impact player in terms of um, punishment on his body yet mm. he is so incredibly fit and athletic so long may this continue but you know where do i rank him i find it very hard i'm sorry i'm sorry to be evasive but yeah. um i can't really put a you know when you start talking about the la- the likes of van nistelrooy and Ooh. you know dennis Law and say dennis it again Pilot, barry the, it's, <laughs> it's difficult so um another answer i don't know at this moment okay um what i liked was that you you compared him to robin van persie because i totally agree with that in the sense that Yes, we haven't won a league, and that's partly not because of Zlatan Ibrahimovic, that's because of the team around him. But had Zlatan Ibrahimovic been added into one of those kind of sides, we would have definitely been winning the league and challenging for the Champions League. And it's just a shame. It's like Ruud van Nistelrooy. He was at the club at the wrong time, and he should have had so much more to show for it. Paul, um, do you agree with Barry or think a little bit? Yeah, I mean, completely. It's, It's impossible to rank players from different eras anyway and it's especially impossible to rank someone that had five seasons at the club against someone that's had two-thirds of a season so you can't you can't um place him in a pecking order but what you can do is kind of compare the kind of striker he is with with strikers that we've had in the past and i completely agree with barry the player he most brings to mind is Cantona, both in terms of presence i'm not I don't. I mean, he's obviously been more prolific across the course of his career than Cantona was, but Cantona had a heck of an eye for goal too, didn't he? Um, oh, yeah. But you know that that kind of that giant physique and that enormous presence is is kind of Cantona esque, and also the fact that he's a nine and a half. You know that he's constantly dropping deep, which has actually caused us some problems uh, at at various points this season. And and I think it's, you know, Van Persie is the logical comparison because of that kind of dramatic impact in a telling moment but at the moment you couldn't even really have him above Van Persie because what Van Persie did was fire us to a league title um best case scenario we win three uh cups that two of which are kind of lesser cup competitions and come third in the league I mean it's a pretty amazing it all have been a pretty amazing personal season from Zlatan but you know I, I think I think ultimately it's it's easy to get giddy and we've kind of equivocated and said you can't rank him. I think one of the reasons I say you can't rank him is because if you did, you'd have to rank him quite low down mm. the pecking order just because it's happened for such a short period of time. If you're ranking him as in the, the kind of ultimate quality of player he is versus all of those others, he'd have to be extremely high up. He's unquestionably one of the best players ever to play for Manchester United, which is a different question to best Manchester United players, if you see what I mean. I get what I totally get what you're saying. And it's quite, it's kind of like, although in different s- scenarios, remember when Henry Clarsen oh, came? You just ripped my point oh, I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then, Steve. Not bad. I'll let you run with it. You, I just what I was going to say is, it's how, you, you, never hear, um, you never hear of Henry Larson being brought up in any of these in terms of the impact that they had. <laughs> Ultimately, he didn't really win anything with Henry Larson while he was at the club. But Henrik Larsson's impact was that he was a phenomenal footballer that had achieved a lot in his career that came to United at the end of a glittering career that maybe we didn't see the best of him, maybe we didn't see enough of him. If Zlatan stays for one more year, that's probably going to be the absolute limit. Are we going to get him for two more years? I, I honestly doubt next it. Season. I honestly think I can see him wanting to, like everyone said already, Cantona off into the sunset. And another thing on Cantona is Zlatan didn't score. We met him last week. I don't know if you ever mentioned that. But uh, Zlatan didn't score. <laughs> was it didn't score more than thirty or didn't score more than fifty? I think it was more than thirty he until he was after thirty. Cantona retired at thirty, and he was a player that didn't rely on pace. It was a, a player that relied on intelligence and positioning and the way he, he brought others into the game. What did we lose when Cantona lost? He could have had another five or six years scoring fifty goals a season, smashing it. I lost my weight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I lost my weight right. in tears. Oh. Mm-hmm. Ah. But yeah, so the same sort of thing. We'd, we're not really going to see the ultimate best of Zlatan and maybe he's one of those that got away. Maybe he's someone that we should have been looking another to sign like last earlier because he is made for us. Another one like Larson Van der Sar. Yeah. Could have been signed earlier, should have been signed earlier. Should have been signed earlier. Although he did how a did, lot more in a, how did put over Fulham a longer period over of time. Here? Mm. You've ate Fulham. I think, I think one of the one of the big things about this is we should. It, this is a classic case of 
don't be sad about the thing that didn't happen. Be glad about the thing that is happening. It's like yeah, the what cool. might. The, All right, the, the, do you what work for Clinton? Smart we are. <laughs> it, it runs a lot deeper than that. Um, the, uh, the, 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 but it's true. The, the joy of watching uh, Larson in a United shirt was was how ephemeral it was. Like it just happened and then it was gone. And Ibrahimovic is kind of like that. We're getting this extended cameo uh, in the l later stages of his career, which has, which is just fun from a United perspective. But from his perspective, imagine how delighted he must be to be bossing it in the Premier League after being told his whole career, well, he couldn't do it there. Not only can he do it there, he can do it there when he's old. Yeah, one of those pundits that written him off as well, as Barry said earlier, was Michael Owen. And um, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, I read this stat as, scored almost the same amount of goals since after he was 30 as Owen did in his career. Wow. Actually, I think he might have scored about not far off what Rooney scored talk. in his whole career Barry talk since uh, Rooney's... Go on, Barry. If you come back to Henrik Larsson, his was a very short-term contract, about 10 weeks, because yeah. he'd, he'd contracted to Helsingborg where he was going to play. And it's well documented that Fergie wanted him to stay. And in fact, he's even said in retrospect he should have stayed on because he just brought that little bit extra. And I think what Zlatan has done is he's, we're always massively proud to be Man United supporters, no matter how well or badly the team are doing. But we're walking around with that extra little bit of swagger at the moment because of Zlatan, um, because the football is so sublime at the moment. And he's restored a lot of pride to the, to the club, I believe. Yes. Mm. He has, I do. Where it, I think what we can all agree on is that wherever he ranks, he ranks above Michael Owen. <laughs> yes, we can. Wait, 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 wait. Do you not remember that goal? Against City, yeah. I ended up 20 metres away with a cut shin. Yeah, but... <laughs> I'm, yet, I'm yet to have that happen with Zlatan. I'm not... I'm just I broke my back advocate. on Sunday. <laughs> Bloody yeah. Right. Moving on. Do you know what, though? I remember having a chat with Jay when we was thinking that Mourinho might come, and I said, one thing Mourinho's going to come and bring is arrogance to Manchester United and confidence. And, and I said, we needed someone. And at the time, I said, Gareth Bale. Someone, when you look at the team sheet and you go, we're coming to Old Trafford, when, and it's a Jose team that never loses at home. And, and I was thinking, you need that, but you need a player who's going to scare you. And I think when you look at the Manchester United team sheet, now you see Pogba on there, and you go, mm. and you see Zlatan on there, and you're like, Pfft. And I think that was what we... <laughs> Just you just make noises, don't you? That's what I'm trying to say. You just you just go. <laughs> mm, Imagine oh, what you'll be saying next season when Jose buys a few more. We'll come mm. on to that in a bit because we do have to talk about potential um, replacements or cover. Um, now I want to come on to influence on youth. Now my opinion on this is that all they need to do is look at Zlatan Ibrahimovic's Twitter feed. Look at his last two tweets. They have been trophies. He hasn't tweeted in between them. He hasn't done anything else. And now, obviously, we're in an age where it's social media. I'm all over it myself. But he's such a fantastic leader for those players. And what do you think is... Do you think we will feel his impact like we did with Cantona? I know we've mentioned Cantona a lot in this. Uh, did I mention I met him last week? Um, but where, what do we think his impact will be after he leaves the club, Paul? I think this is a fascinating question. And guess what? This is the triumvirate. This is the third time in a row we're going with I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's, that's because it's the, only point things to bet on this. It's, it's the only correct answer. Because you couldn't have guaranteed when Cantona left that um, we only saw the fruits of that after he left. We saw what happened to the work ethic of the class of 92. That's, that's Cantona's defining contribution to Manchester United. Isn't his goals, it isn't him kicking Matthew Simmons. It's <laughs> what he taught the class of 92 about the value of practice. And it will, be, it, will, it will be the test of time which teaches us whether Marcus Rashford gets to 35 and is still flying because he's looked after his body in the way that Zlatan taught him to when he was the age he is now. You know, so th this is something that only the test of time will prove. I think because of the type of player he is, it's not like you're necessarily going to learn technique from Ibrahimovic mm. because you really don't really want to be teaching footballers how to pull the ball down from head height with their back heel. You know, that's like, it's not it's not what you're actually I thought supposed that was to week do. One. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you do that? Can you not do that? Uh, I'm I'd not, love to I'm see not, you do that, Steve. I'll do that all day, man. <laughs> um, so it's not necessarily about technique, but it's about 
work ethic and winning mentality. Those are, those are hopefully the two things he'll engender in the young. And even like even Paul Pogba, who is only 23 and so still needs influences around him. I wonder whether he's not the player because you can see him and Zlatan are close, and you can see the kind of big brotherly. Big, big brotherly relationship that Ibrahimovic has with Pogba. And it'll be interesting to see how that um, pays off in Pogba's career over the years ahead. Hopefully he just doesn't leave when Zlatan does. Uh, Barry, who do you think will benefit most from Zlatan Ibrahimovic's uh, stay, however long it may be here at United? Raiola. I, I think on the one hand, on the, one hand the young strikers, um, I would imagine that the coaching staff are telling them to keep an eye on Zlatan, watch how he prepares himself for a game, watch how he trains. Um, I think that would be very important. And not just not just the lads in the first team squad, but the younger players as well. Um, I think he's certainly having an influence on the entire squad. He seems to be the man. Um, I think everybody galvanizes around him. And I think a lot of this is rubbing off on the younger players. Um, the senior pros, not so much because they've kind of, you know, they, they've been there for a long period of time. I don't think they're as influenced as the younger players are. But one would hope a lot of positive influences on the younger players. And like I say, right through the club, not necessarily in the first team squad. And only in time, as Paula said, will we be able to comment on a legacy that he's left at the club as Cantona did. And Cantona is, in terms of that, Cantona is massive. He really is. So will this fella be able to do the same? I think only time will tell. I think there's going to be a Cantona drinking game on this debate. <laughs> What's your thoughts, anyway? In terms of legacy, I hope um, the likes of Marcus Rashford and Anthony Marshall are just sitting at him all starry-eyed every time they're in the canteen and just listening to every word that he says. Uh, and as the lads have mentioned... Uh, watching the way he prepares for a game because the guy is 35 years old and you wouldn't know it would you he's in phenomenal shape he hasn't been injured um, so whatever he's doing he's doing something right so my for him ask him every little question like you, you wouldn't shut up would you you'd just be constantly just my for him and just ask him and and find out what he's doing and I'm sure Marcus Rashford from what I hear Marcus Rashford is a hard trainer and he's a, a diligent trainer and and from if if Marcus Rashford is anything like that, and he's anything like what the Class of 92 lads did when they was trying to emulate Cantona and trying to impress Cantona and you hear like Gary Neville saying, we just wanted him to like us. And, and I hope that that's the sort of relationship that Rashford and, and Zlatan have got. And I hope that they're you know doing little one-twos in training and, and he's learning little things off him. And he's like, oh, show me that little body roll you did. And, and things like that, that he can work on him one-on-one -on -one with. And I'm sure Zlatan is the kind of guy that would do that. You see that uh, we scored a couple of goals at the weekend and Zlatan immediately got the whole team into a huddle. He might not be that. wearing an armband, but the guy's a leader. I love that. After yeah. when, it went, when it went to 2-0 as well, he was just talking to everyone. Um, they were celebrating, but he was like giving a team talk while everyone was celebrating. And I really like that, even though he's scored or whatever, or he can take that time to just take Game himself out of the situation. And he's, he's a guy that's got met, he's got a house for his medals, apparently. He's got that many medals. <laughs> so this is a guy that knows how to win. So any little nugget of information you can get of him of a 19, 20-year-old centre forward. Like I said, I hope Martial and Rashford are just little puppy dogs that follow him around training all day long, just anything that he says. Marshall just, giving him the side Just copy of yeah, Marshall just looking at Mark. <laughs> 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 Moving on from that, we're going on to what's next now. Um, I heard, I think it was Gary Neville said something on the telly about how Zlatan Ibrahimovic, like when Jose Mourinho arrived here, he didn't know what kind of squad he was getting into. He would have knew one or two of the players, but when he brought Zlatan, he immediately had someone starting every game that knew what the manager wanted, that was the manager's voice on that pitch. Now, I think that's going to be the most difficult thing to replace, but I also think over time, other players will fill that role. You look at the likes of Herrera, Bay, etc. becoming more vital. But what do you think is going to happen next? Whether it's in 2018 or 2017, how do we replace him? Is it just a case that Marshall and Rashford will step forward? Or do we need to bring in someone that is that big name, that big ego that Zlatan Ibrahimovic is? Paul? I mean, I think in a way, the best thing about this summer is that it worked on three different layers. It worked on immediate impact, medium term and long term, because say he stays till the end of next season. By that time, 
Paul Pogba will be the the man in in a way that he's you can see he has that in him and it's kind of coming. And and I I really loved the fact that we signed Ibrahimovic rather than a striker in their absolute physical prime because Rashford and Martial are so exciting as striking mm. options. I mean, uh, you know, I don't. It, it's too early to say whether this will happen or not. But it would be kind of tragic if we didn't give Marcus Rashford the chance to be the man in United's attack at some point in his career because he looks like he's got the physical and technical and mental tools to do the job. So my ideal scenario is that the number nine shirt goes straight from Ibrahimovic to Rashford. when uh, Call. Not going back to Marshall then. <laughs> uh, no, I, th I think Martial, he, he, he will learn to love Ryan Paul's Giggs' number 11. Paul's side eye here now. Marshall just slammed his laptop shut. <laughs> Barry. I, well, I mean, he's so good coming off the left, Martial. Like a, a front three of of Martial, Rashford and Griezmann oh! or Martial, Rashford and Mkhitaryan. Say again. Oh! Too good. Um, and, and it works as a collective and it will change our style of play a bit but there isn't there's no direct replacement for Zlatan Ibrahimovic anywhere he's Zlatan Ibrahimovic God you've said it um, uh, that's also a Bleacher Report exclusive Griezmann will replace uh, Zlatan <laughs> <laughs> uh, Barry um, Paul needs to remember that uh, Marshall took Adnan Yanuzai's number 11 shirt <laughs> <laughs> good, good point oh yeah he needs to give that back um, <laughs> I think it, in Martial and Rashford, we have two of the most exciting young strikers in the world. Yeah. And I would be very disappointed if they weren't given a chance. The thing is, at, at United, it's not so much, you know, if we look where, when Marcus broke through into the team, there was little choice. There were injuries, he had to be played, and he took his chance brilliantly. Um, I think that United will make a marquee signing as a striker come next season. Um, the talk is all about Gritzman, whether it will be him or not, I don't know. I could certainly see him fitting into the side. And bear in mind that we're a little bit short on strikers in the squad. Um, you know, we, we play really with four strikers in the squad. Um, we're not certain what Dwayne Rooney will be doing next season. So I, I foresee a top striker being brought in next season. But hopefully with Rashford and Martial being given um, a lot of chances. As we've seen this season, uh, it is a squad game. There are a hell of a lot of games. We'll be playing a lot of games next season, including the Champions League. Mm. So we'll need these yeah. players, that's that's for sure. And I, I think that Rashford definitely has a big future at United. And I would hope Martial has as well. A um, little bit of a question mark over his mental attitude, but I'm hoping that'll improve. I think last season he was the man, he was the top scorer. He had to give up the jersey this season. I don't know how kindly he took to that. He's looked a little bit Sorry. uninterested at times, but I think Jose is man managing himself very well this season, man managing him well this season. And, you know, it's that difficult second season that players often have. And I foresee both Rashford and Martial doing well at United in years to come. I, I, I do agree with what you said there about them doing well in the future. I do feel Martial is just totally misunderstood. I yeah. genuinely, I, I, I don't know otherwise. Um, he could be the moodiest guy ever at training. I don't know. But I just feel like because of his demeanour, because of his swagger, it's like when people say, ah, oh, Berbatov's got no passion for the game. You can't say that. Passion isn't measured in how much you run around or anything like that. So I feel, but, feel I know you weren't saying he hasn't got passion for the game. I just yeah. feel like he's a little bit misunderstood um, in, in how his demeanor comes across. People who've interviewed him I, said I, the guy's just I, like the most quietest, that, sullen guy ever. Yeah, I, I would accept that. But I think Martial's demeanor last season was different from how it's been this season. Um, I think, you know, last season he was scoring a lot of goals. He was the go-to guy. This season he said to take a step back. But I agree with you. Um, it's very difficult to read. And I think if the guy's attitude wasn't right, we wouldn't see him in the team yeah, at all. Very true. Um, yeah. And I think it's, I know this isn't the Martial huge debate, but I think it's uh, he's being asked something different tactically as well. Um, and I think he's just asked. And I feel like someone's told him, Marshall, smile more, mate. 
Enjoy you. You're playing for like because I have seen it recently. He's doing videos like, where he's smiling. smiled last week in a press conference when he said, and this is where you know exactly what's going on in the guy's head. He goes, "I love this city. I love this club, and the fans are awesome." And he was smiling while he said it. What more do you want from the guy? Like that is literally the, literally the only time you've seen the guy smile. So I'm, I've got no issues with him whatsoever. But what what's next for Zlatan? Um, what's and United. the future going to hold for us? I, I do think. Ultimately, he is going to be needing to be replaced. I'd love a big Lukaku-shaped replacement. And whether or not... This might be how you keep hold of Zlatan and integrate him. I don't know how you would integrate a £50 million at least signing for Lukaku um, as the number nine and swap him in and out with Zlatan. Mourinho never tends to do that. So as much as I think that might be a plan, it wouldn't be the plan. It'd be one of them the sitting out. Mourinho would go back to Lukaku? Because we've spoken about I Lukaku think he a could. lot, but I, think he I could. thought when he came... Lukaku dreams dead. I think he could, and there's rumours of uh, Koeman's been mentioning Wayne Rooney, so I think that there's a lot of things that stack up to making that deal happen, but that doesn't mean that it's going to happen. I think with the, the development of Marcus Rashford, what's crazy is it was only this week, last year, that he um, he was making his debut for Manchester United. Now, to yeah. think if he went into the under-23s today, it's absurd to even think that you would put Marcus Rashford back in the under-23s today. But only a year ago... He wasn't even good enough for the under-23s. He was an under-18s player. I've never seen a player take their opportunity the way Marcus Rashford has. And the development over the course of a year, yes, he's not scoring goals at the rate he did last year, but he's not played centrally as much as he was last year. He's helping the team in other ways. But he's developing as a much more rounded player. He was a very narrow threat in terms of that. He was fast and he'd get through one-on-one with the keeper. There's a lot more to his game now. He's developed hugely as a footballer in this last 12 months. And I, I agree with Barry. And I think he's got a huge future at Manchester United. And uh, I can't wait to see what happens with him. You well, can retire at the end of next season after we win the Premier League and Champions League. Yeah, he's won a lot. Why, 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 why carry on? He's oh, on top. Um, right, what was next? Let me check. Sorry. Message was Latin. You know the drill, don't you? Yeah, go on then, you go first. Should have come here five years ago, mate. We'd have won the lot. Nice, short and sweet. Barry! We know Zlatan's a subscriber. What's your, com- what's your yeah. message for him? Message for Zlatan. Greetings from South Africa. You've got <laughs> a lot of fans over here, as you have worldwide. Come and visit us over here and carry on making in the goals for Man United. Do you no. want him to stay? Are you going to ask him to stay? Or like Jose, would you never beg a player to stay? Um, uh, it's a difficult one. Um, I think it would be, in many respects, very disappointing if he stayed another season and it was a bad season because that's what he'd be remembered for. So in some respects, I I think this kind of romantic thing would be that he he scores 45 goals this season and he <laughs> retires on a high. He's only got to double his tally. But I don't want him to go. We've still got about 70 games left, so it's possible. (laughs) And that's just in the Europa League. (laughs) Paul, what's your message to Zlatan? I I think, honestly, before the season started, the thing I was most excited about this season was the chance to see Ibrahimovic in person week after week. Was it not that they changed the pies at United? I'm not a pie man. (laughs) It has not disappointed one tiny bit. It is an absolute privilege to watch that man play football. He is a football artist and his uh, will to win, the, the way he stepped up at key moments, like obviously the League Cup final, but Palace, Blackburn, uh, the goal he scored against West Brom, even though it got a little deflection on its way through, just his his willingness to try tricks. And uh, yeah, Zlatan, thanks for coming to United. If you want to stay another season, you'll be more than welcome. But if you think oh, you've done your job and that's it, that's all you've got to give and you can't keep up that level, fair enough. We won't object because you've done an awful lot for us this season. So thank you for that. Yeah, I think, I think with Zlatan, um, the only thing's missing for him is a big goal in a big league game and I think with these Winner away trips Chelsea with, ah! these, with these away trips coming up City Arsenal Spurs I know he's still got he's still got something left in him too and I know he's going to be some big moments said, from Zlatan I thought you said big games <laughs> <laughs> yes Barry on that note we've got to play Rostov yeah, we have got to play Rostov. Um, they're crazy. We got tall floodlights as well. Do you guys realise that we did see Zlatan playing at Old Trafford a number of years ago for Inter Milan? Yeah, we beat them two 0 Champions League game. He hit the woodwork in that game. Vidic scored, didn't he? 
Vidic and Ronaldo. Vidic and Ronaldo. Yeah. I'm lacking Good knowledge, Adam. I only started supporting United two years ago. Right, <laughs> guys. <laughs> Apparently, um, Vine it. <laughs> R.I.P. Vine. Ah, uh, guys. Hashtag Field Grizz. We're, we're out of here. Make sure you go check out Barry on uh, Twitter. It's at Doc United, isn't it, Barry? Yep. Uh, check out Paul on uh, United Rankcast and Bleacher Report as well. Tweet Piers uh, Morgan. You're. A- <laughs> <laughs> um, let us know what you like on your pizzas in the comments below. Pineapple What's for the win. What's your favourite pie at United? Because the United pie blows it out of the water. It's got chillies in there. It's got meat in there. It's got gravy in there. It's an absolutely fantastic pie. It is pie. a great pie. What an upgrade. What a treat. Later. See you later. See you later.